the Government of Alberta is seeking expressions of interest from proponents to build a new refinery so that we can create even more jobs and add even more value. We know companies are interested. We've heard it firsthand. So we are stepping up. First, Alberta announced the purchase of, or the potential purchase of new rail cars, then a historic production cut. Now, Alberta has unveiled its latest solution to low oil prices, a long-term plan to get an oil refinery built. The province is trying to boost Canadian oil prices ever since they touch record lows compared to other oil price prices around the world. Here's a, here's a reminder of why that gap exists. Compare two barrels of oil, one produced in Canada, the other in the U.S. Canada's oil sells for less than oil produced south of the border, often referred to as the price differential. Why? Because Canadian oil is heavier, making it harder and more expensive to refine. Oil prices are also affected by where the oil is produced. The further you have to transport it to a refinery, the less you get for it. The current price gap began to widen significantly in late 2017 after the Trans-Canada Keystone Pipeline spill in South Dakota. Storage facilities then filled up in Alberta. Too much oil and limited ways to move it force prices down. At one point, Canadian oil sold for $40 less than the world price, but that gap has since narrowed by more than half. So why take additional action? Marg McQuaig-Boyd is Alberta's Minister of Energy, and she joins me now from Edmonton. Hi, Minister. Nice to see you again. Thanks for your time. Hi, Vashi. So I understand that the deadline for industry to submit expressions of interest is February, but what's the timeline like for actually having some kind of refinery facility online in Alberta? Uh, well, we're not quite there in that kind of timeline, but what we're asking um, industry to do is, uh, you know, give us your business case of why that might be a solution for Alberta. We heard, we've heard anecdotally from many sources that we should be looking at refining, so uh, that's what we're doing. So today's announcement was just about give us those expressions of interest by February and then we'll look at next steps based on that information. What makes you think there is a business case? And I ask because there hasn't been really anything built in Alberta since the 1980s. The only one, the North, formerly known as the Northwest Upgrader that I'm most familiar with, is long overdue, not scheduled to come online until 2019. What makes you think there is a business case for building refining capacity in Alberta right now? Well, and that, that's just what we're asking uh, industry who have told us, that, you know, that uh, we should be looking at that. We're saying, give us your business case for why that is a, could be a thing for Alberta. And uh, we're asking, you know, can it be in on brownfield, so an extension of what already exists, or is it a greenfield project? And, and based on what we get back, we'll look at next steps. But, um, you know, as in your introduction, you mentioned we're looking at, you know, increased pipeline capacity, um, crude by rail, and we're doing a number of up things in the upgrading space here in Alberta. And this is just one more step. <clears throat> to, um, you know, create markets for our products and, you know, essentially create made in Alberta solutions for our resources and keep more value here in Alberta. But if it doesn't come online for something like 10 years, I mean, these are not cheap projects and they're not quick projects. For example, that Northwest Upgrader was first pitched, I think, in 2009. It won't come online now until 2019. That's a 10-year timeline. If you're talking about having an effect on the price differential that exists right now, what will that accomplish? Uh, you know, these are long, as you rightly say, these are long-term solutions, as are pipelines. You know, it's, it's taken a number of years to get a pipeline built to Tidewater. And, you know, we're, so that's, we're working on that long-term solution. But in the meantime, we can't wait um, and hope that, you know, other things will happen. We need to have made in Alberta solutions and, you know, quit <clears throat> shipping our resources south to the U.S., uh, a number of jobs that way, it, that direction as well. And we need to keep more... Uh, resources here in Alberta and, and uh, in fact the money that comes from those resources so this is a long-term solution to the issue um, you know but we know that we've we've certainly heard that this is an option so that's what we're exploring today but it, you're right it's not short term in the short term we're looking at moving crude by rail and with the curtailment drawing down some of the supply we have will you make a decision on whether or not to go ahead with any of those expressions of interest before the next election uh, you know, I think we'll go into the next steps, but this isn't about doing this before the next election. This is a long-term look 
at a recovery built to last for Alberta. And uh, isn't it fair though that know, voters the know the vision that we're taking? Uh, you know, they will know the next steps, but we don't want to rush uh, rush something either. We want to do this the right way. Um, you know, back in Lougheed days, this is something that was started and then was dropped by subsequent governments. And we're picking up that vision. And again, this is about a long-term vision for our energy industry. And as much information as we're able to share, we will. But absolutely, it'll be about next steps and uh, about a recovery built to last. Are you, is your government open to the possibility of provincial money, of taxpayer money, uh, backing this in some capacity? Uh, you know, right now that's a little bit premature. We want to wait and hear what it would take, um, you know, for that. Uh, we're receptive. We're not closing any doors on options, but it's premature till we hear back from industry. What's the business case? What would it take to, uh, to get a refinery built here in Alberta? So I just want to be clear, though, you haven't ruled out spending provincial money on it. I mean, we know what the Northwest upgrader costs, for example, the costs ran, they, they ran very high and higher than expected. It was over $9 billion. Do you expect there to be a provincial component to any kind of project of that magnitude? Um, as I said, it's kind of premature, but we're open to any possibilities. We certainly learned lessons on, you know, the previous government's project with the Northwest uh, refinery. And so, um, you know, with those lessons learned, plus what industry tells us, and to be fair, it's a way different environment than it was, you know, when that refinery was mm -hmm. um, started. So, you know, we're taking all those learnings and putting it into, you know, what we hear and then what, what steps we go next. But we're not closing doors, but we're not presupposing what we're going to hear either. Does your government have the fiscal capacity to do that, though? I mean, you're running a $7.5 billion deficit, and I remember Minister Sisi at the uh, fall update saying that it could grow because of lo low oil prices. Well, you know, and, and again, it's, it's premature to say what we would do. Uh, we need to hear back from industry what is the business case for it. But as you know, in our other projects, we've looked at <clears throat> grants, loans, uh, royalty uh, breaks, you know, all those different things, uh, or, you know, royalty credits, I guess. Um, you know, so we're, we're not closing doors, uh, but at this point, we don't know what we need to know till we hear back with these expressions of interest. All right, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Minister McWig-Boyg. Nice to see you again. Okay, thanks, Bashi.